After 40 years in the shadows, the Scout name is back. The 2028 Traveler SUV and Terra pickup are here, and they aren't just reviving a forgotten icon. They're challenging the very way we think about off-road capable trucks and SUVs. With the odds stacked high and rivals stronger than ever, the question is, can Scout really pull it off? Or is this comeback too little too late? Let's dive in and see if this American legend has what it takes. The story of Scout starts over half a century ago, when International Harvester introduced one of the first real competitors to the Jeep with the original Scout. It was a rugged, no-nonsense, capable, and more refined 4x4, and it quickly gained a loyal following. I see you bought a new car. This isn't just a car, it's a Scout. Come on! But by 1980, Scout was gone, and for more than 40 years, it had faded into automotive history. However, now, thanks to Volkswagen, Scout is making a comeback. VW acquired the brand in 2020. You'll note International Harvester isn't part of the brand anymore, and Volkswagen is using it to spearhead their push into the American EV market. But don't think that this is just another play to ride the nostalgia with. Look at the mask of my boy. VW's bringing Scout back as a serious contender for modern off-roaders, with the Traveler SUV and the Terra pickup, two vehicles that combine old-school toughness with cutting-edge tech. And maybe the biggest news here, folks, is that, unlike we all thought, they're going to be offered as hybrids as well, not just full EVs. One of the biggest challenges facing EVs today, especially for off-roaders, is range anxiety. I mean, Let's face it, unless you've got access to Tesla's supercharger network, charging infrastructure kind of sucks. And how far can you really go before you're stuck looking for a charger in the middle of absolutely nowhere? It's not like you can strap a spare battery to the roof like a gas can. Good news here is that these new scouts will have access to Tesla's network. But regardless, that's where the range extender comes in. It's called the Harvester, which I love, and it's an onboard gas power generator that charges the battery when needed, boosting your range to over 500 miles. Now, it's not exactly clear how Scout has this configured here. The gas engine doesn't power the wheels directly, it just keeps the battery juiced up so you can keep going, sort of like the range extender in the BMW i3 or the upcoming Ram Ram Charger. It's a series hybrid. So for you off-road enthusiasts who want the benefits of electric power but aren't ready to trust charging infrastructure on long trips, this is a total game changer. Scout is betting that the Harvester will give them a real edge over competitors like Rivian, which relies solely on battery power. Oh, and speaking of Rivian, unlike Volkswagen's other recent EV attempts, thanks to their recent $5 billion investment in the company, Scout engineers have the benefit of full access to all of Rivian's homework. And that's a good thing. They're the same picture. When it comes to off-road performance, Scout isn't trying to reinvent the wheel here. Instead, they're sticking with tried-and-true methods that have worked for decades. Both models sit on a body-on-frame chassis, something you won't find on many modern vehicles, let alone EVs, and both feature a solid rear axle for better off-road durability and articulation. According to Scout, these vehicles will have over 12 inches of ground clearance and be capable of fording almost 3 feet of water. And they'll also handle 35-inch tires right out of the box. With front and rear locking differentials, a front sway bar disconnect, and enough power to tackle 100% grades, Scout is making big promises when it comes to off-road chops. The real question is how all this will translate to real-world performance. With numbers like a thousand pound-feet of torque and a zero to 60 time of three and a half seconds, Scout is positioning the Traveler and Terra as serious contenders. But Time will tell if they can truly live up to the hype. One thing Scout seems to have absolutely nailed here is the design. Both the SUV and pickup strike, in my opinion, a perfect balance between retro styling and modern minimalism. The black mask grille, boxy lines, and chunky proportions are all clear nods to the original Scouts, while full LED lighting and clean bodywork pull them firmly into the present. Scouts head of design Chris Benjamin has managed to blend heritage and futurism without falling into the trap of overplaying the nostalgia card. I'm not a car designer, but that seems like it'd actually be pretty hard to do. The 5.5 foot bed on the Terra, the split tailgate on the Traveler, and built-in power outlets on both all make these vehicles practical too, but it's the smaller details like mechanical door handles and the overall simplicity of the styling that really set these trucks apart, especially from the overly complex designs we've seen in other EVs. 
The theme of simplicity and purpose continues on the inside, too. You've got the tech you need, like a large central touchscreen, but Scout hasn't buried everything in digital menus. There are real buttons here, switches, and even the option for a front bench seat, which gives the cabin a classic utilitarian feel. According to Scout, the optional cabana top will provide one of the largest open-air experiences available in an SUV. Which, I don't know, I mean the roofs come completely off Broncos and Jeeps. But a full glass roof is also on offer for those looking for a more enclosed feel. The materials are promised to be durable enough for real-world use, with more robust plastics in high-wear areas and sustainable fabrics and leathers for comfort. They promise luxury blended with utility, and from the looks of things, it's kind of looking like they nailed it. There are still some things we don't know just yet. Production isn't slated to start until sometime in 2026, but Scout is aiming to place the Traveler and Terra right in the heart of the off-road segment, with pricing set to start under $60,000 or closer to $50,000 after federal incentives. If pricing stays that way, these vehicles are positioned competitively against rivals, and on the surface, these new Scouts seem like the best bang for buck in the segment. Key point though, the projected 2027 model year is a ways away, and you wouldn't be shocked if pricing gets moved around a bit. But price isn't everything. According to Scout, the Terra will tow over 10,000 pounds, while the Traveler can pull a respective 7, and both will handle a 2,000 pound payload. Those numbers meet or exceed many gas-powered contenders, and the Harvester range extender could give the Scout a real leg up in a market where pure EVs are still receiving some skepticism. Now, even though we're missing some specs here, it's impossible not to compare these two to some of the toughest names in the segment. Names like Ford Bronco, Jeep Wrangler, Land Rover Defender, Toyota Land Cruiser, and Rivian. Almost all of them legendary names in their own right. And with Scout making its comeback, it's entering a fiercely competitive arena. So let's see how these new Scouts stack up. We'll start with the Bronco. The Scouts beat the Bronco in terms of towing and payload capacity, but the Bronco offers more engine choices and a manual transmission that hardcore off-roaders love. There's no EV or hybrid option here, but some buyers will prefer that. As for the Wrangler, we have an extensive range of engine options, including everything from a plug-in hybrid to a massive V8 with the 392 edition. While the Wrangler remains the off-road king in many respects with its unmatched trail heritage, the Scout Traveler offers a better electric range solution with the Harvester. However, Jeep's legacy in serious rock crawling might still give it an edge for certain off-road purists. Whoa! That'll get you in trouble right there. The modern Defender is known for its luxury as much as its off-road chops. It offers slightly less towing capacity than the Scout Terra, but its range of powertrain options, including a powerful V8, make it a formidable competitor. The Defender sets itself apart with excellent on-road feel and a high-end interior with serious off-road credentials. Water fording capabilities, for instance, nearly match the Scouts, but Scout pulls ahead in ground clearance and versatility with that Harvester range extender. The Land Cruiser brings incredible hybrid power, but its ground clearance and water fording fall behind. That said, the Land Cruiser's legendary reliability and off-road pedigree remain stronger than ever. But in terms of sheer torque and capability, by the numbers, the Scout specs are more aggressive, especially with that range extender. The Rivian R1T and R1S offer insane electric power, up to 835 horsepower and 908 pound-feet of torque. They also outclass the Scout in terms of water fording and ground clearance. However, the range extender option gives the Scout a unique advantage by essentially solving range anxiety, where Rivian's purely electric model still relies on charging infrastructure. Rivian does pull ahead with its quad motor system for serious off-road control, but we'll have to see how it all shakes out once the Scouts hit the trails. To sum it up, the Scouts offer superior towing and payloads as well as the Harvester range extender for long-range off-grid capability and more flexibility living with the thing every day. I love the design inside and out, and I'm beyond stoked there are more options here than just a full EV. But with that, we're still a ways out from seeing these trucks enter production. The competition here is well established. And I wouldn't be shocked that if by the time these scouts start rolling out of the factory, its competitors see some updates to keep them more than relevant. Both the Traveler and the Terra represent more than just a return to form. They're an attempt to merge old school off-road capability with modern EV tech in a way that hasn't been done before. But whether the scout can really challenge Ford, Jeep, and Toyota in this increasingly competitive space remains to be seen.
But what do you think? Will the new scouts have what it takes to stand up to the off-road titans? Well, let us know down in the comments. And as always, don't forget to leave a like and consider subscribing for more. My name's Trav, this is Ideal, I'll catch you all next week.